Welcome back to my shop. My name is Guy and today I'm going to continue to work on my green and green clock. If you missed last week's episode, I'm going to leave a link in the corner for you to take a look at and catch up. Today we're going to finish up the top. We're going to work on the door. I'm actually going to use a CNC machine to make this clock face. So let's get started. The sub top and the top are also going to have an under bevel to them. I've already done the sub top. All I'm going to do is take a marking gauge. I'm going to mark in inch on three sides of the top. And I'm going to take this wheel gauge, mark in almost about three sixteenths of an inch to here. Now I've got that clamped down on my bench, I can just take a hand plane and uh, start playing this down. Now I've got that done, I'm just going to put some glue. I'm mainly concerned about the edges being flat. Alright. Now I've got that in place, it's flush on the back. I've got an even reveal on all the way around it. I'm just going to hold it in place with a couple pin nails. Now the clamp's on, very, very flat all the way around, which is nice. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and leave these clamps on for a while, and I've got other things to do. So this is the board I'm going to be making the door out of, and I need two styles and a lower and a top rail for it. I want to get as much straight grain as possible as I can for the uh, styles. The styles are going to be an inch, so I'm going to set my double square here to about an inch and a quarter and I'm going to pull one off of here and one off of here. Now the bottom rails are going to be about 12 inches long, um, actually 10 inches long, but I'm going to cut off 11 inches off the bottom here for that. And I'll be able to get both the bottom and top rails out of this piece and the rail out of this piece. Now that I know I'm going to get the pieces out of this, I'm going to mill this again, get it down to three quarters of an inch. Then I'm going to cut this bottom half off because where the rails are, that's going to be five eighths of an inch thick. And then I'll cut the rest of the pieces out. Based on what I know about the case, this is 11 inches wide and 23 and 5 eighths inch tall. So this is the bottom rail for the door and this is the top rail. This is 2 and a half inches and this matches the width of this and the two, an 2 inches matches the width of this up here. So before I go any further, I need to cut these to that exact same size as the height of this, which is 23 and 5 eighths. These are the two styles and I've put a triangle on so I can make sure I keep them straight. Now on the inside here, at the top and bottom, there's going to be haunched mortises for haunched tenons on the rails. And I have to cut those now. So what I've got is a quarter inch bit raised up a quarter inch height and three sixteenths of an inch away from my fence here. And the split fence tells me where the bit starts and stops. So the first part of this is I need to take this and make sure I've got the right side against the fence because these are offset. Go like this until it reaches that line, pull it off. And on this side, I'm going to plunge it down and pull it out this way. And I'm going to do that for both rails. Well, there's the start of the haunched mortise. After I get through with the other style, I'm going to go over the mortise machine and then we'll finish these up. I've got my mortise machine set up with a quarter inch bit and it's set for a half inch depth of cut. Now on the, on the bottom, it's going to start here and go two inches all the way up to here. Remember the bottom is two and a half inches. And the top, it's going to start here at a half inch and go to an inch and a half because the top rail is, well, an inch and a half. So I just need to push these pieces through and uh, make these cuts.
I've got the mortises made for the haunch tenons. Now I need to figure out exactly how long those pieces need to be. So I'm just going to take those two and bunch them up like that. And I've got nine inches. These are half inch deep, so I need to make the bottom and top rail for the door 10 inches total. Well, this is the same pattern I used in the first episode to make the cloud lifts for the case sides. All I did was I ripped it down the middle, I added a three inch piece in the center, put another center line, I've got a center line on this piece, I'm just going to rebuild this jig uh, with a wider cloud lift pattern in the bottom. Over at the table saw and I'm getting ready to cut the tenons for the upper and lower rail for the door. Now I've got a dado stack set up. I've got a half inch blade of the blade exposed and it's 3 16 give or take above the table. And I ran a test piece and this is it right here. It's a little bit looser than what I normally run. By some standards it's still pretty good. But I want to make sure that I don't blow out this sidewall here because that's only 3 eighths of an inch thick. I want to make sure that I leave plenty of room in there for glue when I put this together. So that being said, I'm going to go ahead and run these pieces now. I've got the blade raised up to half an inch. I'm getting ready to cut the back cheek of the, of the tenon itself. So I've marked out on these pieces where I need to cut that off of. And I'm just going to go ahead and run them now. Well, I've moved the blade over so I'm only exposing a quarter inch of that and I left it the same half inch height and actually I tweaked it up just a touch. So, and that's going to cut the top of the haunch which is this piece right here. And the fit I'm really looking for is that when I put that in there and slide it all the way up, it's just a little proud of the top which gives me a little bit of breathing room by making sure that I'm tight here and I'm also tight and at the right depth right there. So now that I've got that set, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and run the haunches on the tenons. That's good. It's nice and tight all the way around. It's the right length. Right now I don't want any gaps around the outside at all. I'll fit this later after it's been glued up and the case has been glued up. Now that these parts for the doors are complete, I need to cut a groove in them for the glass to sit in. Now the glass is 3 seconds of an inch thick. So what I've got is a blade from a circular saw which is a sixteenth of an inch. I've got it set a quarter inch high and then the rails from the back of the rail, which is this side, I have a three-eighths of an inch and then I'm going to move the fence over a thirty-second of an inch and cut a groove all the way along its length. Well, with that groove cut in the styles, I'm going to work on the top and bottom rail. Now I'm going to do the same thing I did before, but this time I've got the blade raised up to three quarters of an inch. I just need to make the same cuts. One of the unfortunate things that happened here, and I knew this was going to happen going into it, but I didn't want to wrap it out the back because I didn't want to lose the profile behind the door, behind the glass. So, like I said, I knew that was going to happen, and I've got a 3 32nd of an inch strip that later on I'll use to fill that gap up. Well, here's a groove for the glass going in. My main concern doing all of this was I didn't want to rabbit the back of this because I didn't want to lose the profile as you look through it through the glass. I wanted to have that profile on both sides. Well, 
Well, this is a new addition to my shop. It's a Shape Oco 3 CNC machine. And uh, before I ran a pattern on this MDF, I don't know if you can see that clock face in the screen or not. It's going to have the numbers. It's going to have a real nice design around the outside. And I made this maple here. It's about 3 eighths of an inch thick. And I ran it through the drum sander to make sure it's perfectly flat. This all has to be perfectly flat for it to work right because it's a fairly delicate pattern. And I don't want to ruin any of the numbers or anything. I still might ruin the numbers. It's very possible. So I've put a little mark down here and I'm going to zero the machine to that point right there, run the software, and hopefully it'll cut all this out and it'll come out all right. Now I've got the door piece in there. And what my goal is, is to have this clock face centered in this opening. So what I need to do is I need to take an inch and a half off the bottom of this. And that'll give me a half inch all the way around those four corners. So I've got the clock face in and uh, that reveal is just about dead on perfect. Well, here's the clock moving. It's an inexpensive one. It's quartz and it's got a uh, arm for the pendulum on it. I really didn't want a mechanical one. I had a mechanical clock in my office before and I absolutely freaking hated it. The clicking noise just drove me insane. I started painting the design on the clock face. I'm just using regular uh, acrylic paint here and an artist brush. I don't want to fill this in because I don't want to do a lot of sanding to this because it'll lose the details, especially in the numbers. Some of these are pretty fine too. If I paint outside the lines a little bit, that's okay. I can just clean that up with a little 150 grit sandpaper after it dries. But uh, this is going to take me a while. I'll be here for probably a couple hours doing this. So I was taking some sandpaper and getting rid of the uh, parts where I painted outside the lines, like I said, and it actually cleans up pretty nice. Well, this only took about 10 minutes or so. Got it all cleaned up. Everything looks pretty good. My biggest concern was these very small details right here. I didn't want to infill those with something else than paint and then sand this down through like a drum sander or something like that because I said I'd lose all those details. But uh, I really like the way that looks. Well this is the build up to this point and I think it's looking pretty good.